In section 10.5, we learned about the various conic sections. In this section 11.7, we would like to extend the notion of conic sections into three dimensions, in which case we refer to those as quadric surfaces. To begin, we'd like to understand uh, the notion of mesh lines. Mesh lines of a surface are curves obtained by cutting a surface with well-chosen planes. We say that the mesh line that results when a surface is cut by a plane is called the trace of the surface in the plane. So let's take a look at some examples of mesh lines. First, let's sketch a sphere and then sketch mesh lines associated to it. So for my sphere, when I'm drawing it in two dimensions, I'm going to start with just a circle. But of course, this circle doesn't convey the three-dimensional shape of the sphere. So typically, we draw in... Um, something along the lines of the equator. Now the equator itself is a mesh line, but we could draw additional lines to lead the reader into understanding precisely how this uh, surface is shaped. So we could draw additional latitude lines, and we could also indicate some longitude lines. And the collection of all of these lines are mesh lines right there. So those are mesh lines of a sphere. Now, I chose them to be horizontal and vertical, but they could have also been at a slant. All right, so to recap here, we say that the mesh line that results when a surface is cut by a plane is called the trace of a surface in the plane. So again, if we look back at our sphere example, let's suppose that our well-chosen plane is slicing through the equator of the sphere. So let me sketch that in. All right. And so now if we slice through there and we open up the sphere and look at the line that's going to result on that plane, here's the plane that sliced through the or or through the um, equator, and that plane is going to contain a circle on it. That circle is called the trace of the surface in that particular plane. All right, so how does this all relate to conic sections? So back in section 10.5, we saw that an equation of this form represents a conic section. Now, it was possible that it was degenerate in that that particular equation only defined a point rather than a conic section, or maybe it didn't have a graph at all. But if it did have a two-dimensional graph, it was of the form of one of the conic sections. And as you may recall, that was ellipses, which include circles, parabolas, and hyperbolas. When we bring this up a dimension and bring in the uh, z variable, we now have this type of equation, which has the added terms of the cz squared, fyz, eyz, and an iz term. This is called a second degree equation in x, y, and z. And graphs of such equations are called quadric surfaces. Sometimes we shorten it and just refer to it as quadrics. All right, so this next page is a image that's lifted from the textbook in section 11.7 that gives an overview of the six quadric surfaces that we'll be taking a look at. This handout will be provided to you for all quizzes and exams involving quadric surfaces. So I would like you to get familiar with this sheet um, so that when you're using it on a quiz or an, or an exam, um, you, you are familiar with all of the different equations. Um, let's take a look at the ellipsoid first. This is just an extension of the ellipse that we saw back in 11.5. If you recall, the ellipse had the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. In the ellipsoid, we are just adding this third term, that third dimension in C. Um, for the hyperbola, 
If you'll recall, we learned the general form to be x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. So we have actually two different hyperboloids that we'll take a look at here in three dimensions. The hyperboloid of one sheet, you'll notice, has a plus sign between the x squared and the y squared, but a minus sign uh, before the z squared. So just a single minus sign there. And what that's doing is it's creating hyperbolas in this direction here. Uh, but it's one-sheeted, meaning that it extends in um, both directions along the z-axis here, where the z is the term that is being negated. Now, if we happen to negate both or two of the terms, in this example, x and y, leaving z positive, we get what's called a hyperboloid of two sheets. You'll notice in this example that there is no graph here um, in between certain values on the z-axis. So that's specific to the hyperboloid of two sheets. Next we have the elliptic cone. This cone looks a little bit different here. All terms are squared. There is no constant term. So as opposed to the three previous quadrics, the ellipsoid and the two hyperboloids, there is no constant term here at all. All terms are squared. And you'll see that we get these straight lines governing that cone shape. Um, and of course, ellipses or circles in one direction. The elliptic paraboloid looks very similar with the noted difference that the z term is no longer squared. And so if you take a look at two of the terms, for example, z equals x squared, that looks like a parabola. So we have a parabola uh, in several different traces here, um, creating this elliptic paraboloid. Finally, we come to the hyperbolic paraboloid. This quadric is also known as the saddle, and so you'll hear me refer to it as such. Um, for obvious reasons, it looks like a saddle. Um, certainly, this is the most difficult to draw. And so in this particular example, what we have here is um, a linear term in one of the variables, this one happens to be z, and then two squared terms separated by a, um, a negative sign here. And so again, the, the difference from the elliptic paraboloid to the hyperbolic paraboloid is that negative sign. What you'll notice is the trace in the hyperbolic paraboloid differs depending on what plane you're looking at. We have hyperbolas going in this direction. Okay, so if you if you projected them down to the xy plane, those hyperbolas that I just sketched are going to intersect the y um, axis. We have hyperbolas in this direction. Those would be intersecting the x axis on the xy plane. But then we have parabolas in this plane, right, slicing through the x, z plane. So um, the traces in this uh, quadric are a little bit different in that we get hyperbolas one way, hyperbolas another way, and parabolas another way. So it's by looking at these traces of these surfaces that we will be able to identify which surface it is and also be able to sketch these surfaces. So before we get into sketching, first we want some practice in identifying traces um, and finding their equations. So in each part, find an equation of the trace and state whether it is an ellipse, a parabola, or a hyperbola. So we're given the equation of the quadric, and then they specifically specify what plane we're slicing through to see that trace. So in part A, we want the plane y equals one. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace y with one. And then I'll write it into standard form. So this trace is four x squared plus z squared equals three. So this is the equation of the trace. And then we just need to um, classify which type of a conic section it is. In this case, we have the sum of two squared terms, so we conclude that this is going to be an ellipse. 
All right, so we want to just carry this on with the rest of the equations here in problem 9. So you'll notice in part B, it's the exact same quadric equation. We just have a different trace that we're slicing through. So we have 4 times 1 half squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. And so 1 half squared is 1 fourth times 4 is 1. So when I move it over, I get y squared plus z squared equals 3. Again, we have the sum of two squared, so this is an ellipse. And because the weights in front of both squared terms are equal, we can actually get a little bit more specific and say that this is a circle, but I would accept an answer um, of ellipse for full credit. All right, part C, we have a different type of a quadric. Let's go ahead and evaluate at x equals 2 and see what the resulting trace looks like. All right, so I have 4 times 9 is 36 minus y squared minus z squared equals 16. Let me get this into standard form. I have 20 equals y squared plus x squared. This is, again, an ellipse or more specifically a circle. All right, D, same quadric again, just different um, trace here, Z equals 2. So we have 9X squared minus Y squared minus 4 equals 16. In standard notation, that's 9X squared minus Y squared equals 20. In this case, we have the difference of two squared terms. So we classified this as a hyperbola. All right, the last two terms, we have a new quadric. z squared equals 9x squared plus. That'll be a 4 times 4 or 16. All right, so this one we can see we don't even need to manipulate. This is a parabola. And finally, for z equals 4, we have 4 equals 9x squared plus 4y squared. This is an ellipse. For the rest of the notes, we're going to focus on um, a strategy for sketching these various quadric surfaces. This is going to take some time, and as you practice sketching these quadric surfaces, you'll kind of come up with um, a way to identify the best types of planes to slice through and identify those traces. Um, but in general, how we're going to do this is we're going to first just identify the quadrant by putting it into standard form and then referring back to that quadric handout that will always be provided for you. So again, that's back at page two. Um, make sure that you have this page handy when you're working out these problems in homework so that you become familiar with this. Once you've identified the quadric and have it in standard form, you want to sketch various traces of the surface in the coordinate planes. Typically, the coordinate planes are the first planes that I'm going to check. However, if, that, if those coordinate planes don't give you enough traces for you to piece the surface together, choose other appropriate planes. Again, we will identify what are different appropriate planes for different quadric surfaces, but I gave some examples of z equals 1 or y equals x. Once you have enough of those traces, you can piece it together with some additional mesh lines to give the reader an idea of the shape of this surface. All right, so let's take a look at number 15 to get started. We want to identify and sketch the quadric surface that's defined by that equation. So first of all, what I see are the sum of three uh, squared terms, and that's equaling the constant 1. So if you refer back to page 2 here, we recognize this to be an ellipsoid. And in fact, it's already even in standard form. So the ellipsoids are generally the easiest to sketch. Sketching the traces <clears throat> in the coordinate planes is usually enough to get an idea of what's happening here. So I would like to find the traces in z equals 0, y equals 0, and x equals 0. So if I zero out the z term, what I'm getting here is x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So we recognize this to be an ellipse in the xy plane. 
If you want, you can write this as x squared over 1. So we want to go out 1 <clears throat> unit on the x-axis in both directions. And then remember, you always want to take the square root of what's underneath the um, variable. So we want to go out 1, 2 on the y-axis. All right, so let me just indicate those with points. And we want to sketch the ellipse in that crosses through those two points. I'm going to make the front of that ellipse solid. And I'm going to make the back of it dashed because that'll be in the back of our ellipsoid. All right, so there's essentially the equator of our ellipsoid. Now let's find the trace in y equals 0. That's going to give us the trace in the xz plane. That gives us x squared plus z squared over 9 equals 1. Again, if you want to write that x squared over 1, that's fine. We already have these points on x equals plus and minus 1 on the x-axis. Now we need them at z equals plus and minus 3. All right, so I'm going to sketch that ellipse through those four points. Again, making the front of it a solid black line and making the back of it dashed. Okay, let's get one more trace here in at x equals 0. In other words, the trace that's flattened onto the yz plane. This will give us y squared over 4. Let's clean that up. And z squared over 9 equals 1. So we already have those points indicated here. And I'm going to make this a solid line all the way around because it's in the plane of the paper. All right, so we have sketched the mesh lines in the three coordinate planes. In the case of the ellipsoid, this is enough to guide the reader what this ellipsoid looks like. If you wanted to sketch a couple more mesh lines, you certainly could. So I'll do a couple here kind of near the North Pole and South Pole of this ellipsoid, but those are completely um, um, optional. Uh, the shape of the ellipsoid was clear already. All right, let's move on to the next example, which is problem 17. Identify and sketch the quadric surface defined by this given equation. So you'll notice the difference here is that we have the single minus sign in front of the um, z squared term and we still have the constant on one side so if you refer back to our handout this is a hyperboloid of one sheet all right so let's just scroll back up to our quadric handout and let's take a look at this hyperboloid the traces in the hyperboloid vary, but you'll notice again that we have hyperbolas going this way. We also have some hyperbolas going this way if we slice through here. But then what we have are either circles or ellipses in the direction of the negative squared term. So if you're anything like me, I avoid trying to draw hyperbolas because I'm not very accurate at it but I'd much rather draw circles or ellipses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero in on this squared term, and I'm going to pick various values for that squared term in order to accurately draw these ellipse traces, and then I'll piece those ellipses together with hyperbolas. All right, so following that setup, Again, I want to emphasize that it happens to be the case that the squared term that's negative is z. It need not always be that case. Maybe the x squared or the y squared term is negative. So let's choose some convenient values of z to plot these traces that are going to be ellipses. So the most convenient value for z, of course, is going to be z equals 0, that coordinate uh, plane or yeah the coordinate plane um, on the xy axis. So if we do that we get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. So this is the ellipse that's going out plus and minus 2 on the x-axis 
and plus and minus 3 on the y-axis. So as usual, I'm going to make the front of this ellipse look solid and the back of the ellipse look dashed. All right, so next I would like to choose convenient values for z so that when I plug it in, I can identify what the uh, resulting um, ellipse is going to be. So the most convenient values for z would probably be plus or minus 4. So if I do that, I get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9. When I plug in plus and minus 4, z squared becomes 16. So that fraction becomes a 1. When I add it over to the other side, I get 2. All right, and so if you wanted to put this in standard form, it would look like x squared over 8 plus y squared over 18 equals 1. So this is also an ellipse. And I'm just going to mark 4 on my z-axis up here. Similarly down below. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some ghost axes in here. So here I'm ghosting the y-axis. And now I'm ghosting the x-axis. All right. And what I'd like to do is sketch the ellipse. In the x direction, I need to go out plus and minus square root of 8. So that's really close to 3. And then along the y-axis, I'd like to go out plus minus square root of 18, which, a which is a little bit past 4. All right, go ahead and sketch these ellipses in. I'm going to make this top ellipse solid all the way around. It's going to serve as the top of my hyperboloid. And then do the exact same thing down here at negative 4. It's the exact same ellipse. All right, I will do the front of this ellipse solid, and I'll sketch the back of it dashed. We can now envision the shape of this hyperboloid of one sheet since we already determined that it was one sheeted. And so from here, piece these three traces together with some additional mesh lines. So in particular, we need the outer hyperbolas here connecting them together. So again, I feel confident that this is enough traces and mesh lines to give the reader an understanding of how the shape of this quadric surface is. All right, so we'll move along to page five. We, our goal is to work through examples of each type of quadric so that you get um, some practice in sketching each of these. So here's our next quadric. You'll notice that all three variables are being squared. There is no constant term in this case. So if we put this into standard form, this would be z squared equals x squared over 4 plus y squared. And this is an elliptic cone. Not an elliptic zone, but an elliptic cone cone. There we are. All right. So if you take a look at z equals zero, this is an important aspect of the elliptic cone. We get zero equals x squared over four plus y squared. 
There is only one way that you can square two real values and get zero back out, and that is if both x and y were zero. So this is just a single point at the origin. So the trace in the xy plane is that single point at zero, zero, zero. Now, you'll recall with the cone that we had two different types of traces. So let's come back up there. All right, so let's clean this up so we can draw on it again. What we have in the cone is we either have these lines that are truly lines intersecting at the origin, and those are happening in the XZ plane and the YZ plane, or we have these circles or ellipses, which are forming at um, planes that are parallel to the Z equals zero plane. So the term that is isolated on one side and positive are the ones that I like to evaluate because again, I would rather draw circles and ellipses than trying to get these lines slanted at exactly the right tilt. So I'm gonna choose convenient values for Z and draw traces in those planes. So pick your first value for Z, maybe we'll say Z equals plus or minus one is an easy one. So that's gonna give us four equals X squared plus 4y squared, or in other words, had you plugged it into the original, or the um, standard equation, we would get 1 equals x squared over 4 plus y squared. So this is going to be an ellipse there at z equals 1. I am going to take a very large step up on the z-axis. So much larger than how I'm going to increment my x and y axes. So now draw in those ghost axes for x and y. And then draw your ellipse accordingly. So on the x axis, which is this one, we want to go out one, two, and one, two. On the y-axis, we just want to go out one. And then I'll sketch that ellipse. And do the same on the bottom. Go out one, two on the x-axis. And go out one on the y. Okay, and then because we have already identified that this is an elliptic cone, in my opinion, just having these three traces, one of which is being degenerate, is enough to sketch in the cone. So now what we want to do is find the sides of the cone. And again, if you would like to add some additional mesh lines here, you most certainly could. So this would look like something like this. All right. Now, it is important to note that all of these surfaces are infinite. So what I mean by that is, technically speaking, this cone continues on. Right? So you might have chosen a larger Z value and your cone might extend up this far with the understanding that it actually goes off to infinity. And same along the bottom. This cone just keeps continuing on the same trajectory up the z-axis and down the z-axis. So everybody's sketch might look a little bit different in terms of how far they extend, but they should all have the same shape. The surface should look the same everywhere. All right, let's continue on to the next example of a quadrant, number 21. Again, identify and sketch. This is certainly not in standard form, so let's put it in standard form first by dividing this entire equation through by 36. That gives us z squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 minus x squared over 4 equals 36. 
So in this example, you'll note that we have two negative terms, two negative squared terms, and we also have a constant on one side. So that leads us to the fact that this is a hyperboloid of two sheets. So to gain some insight as to how to best choose the um, how to best choose the traces that will help us sketch this surface, let's flip back up to that quadric surfaces handout. All right, so here's what we're looking at. So we're looking at the hyperboloid of two sheets here in the lower left corner. And what do our traces look like? We have hyperboloids in the yz plane in this direction. We have hyperboloids in the xz plane in this direction. Again, I am not a fan of drawing hyperboloids. I'm not going to do it very accurately. So I would not like to really sketch anything in those two coordinate planes. So again, that was the y equals a constant and the x equals a constant. Those are going to be both hyperboloids. So instead, I would like to draw these nice ellipses or circles, and these are in the z equals a constant. So if I choose appropriate values for z, then I can find uh, nice traces that are going to give me the two pieces of these hyperboloids. Now again, notice that there is no trace here for some amount of z values. So we need to identify where these hyperboloids are beginning, and then we can add some additional ellipses to sketch them in. So let's take a look at our particular example. All right, so the question becomes, for what values of z do we have traces? So let's just take a look here, first of all, at z equals zero. What's happening at this case? What we would get is negative y squared over 9 minus x squared over 4 equals 1. All right, This is no good, right? Because we can't have two negative squared terms and add them up to be a positive number. So there is no graph here. So this graph just does not at all touch the xy plane. z equals 0, there's nothing. So the question becomes, well, how high do we need to go in order to identify where this hyperboloid is starting? So let's take a look at, oops, at plus and minus 2. So if I plug in plus and minus 2 here, that's going to make this z squared over 4 term 1, which means the 1 here is going to cancel with the 1 here. So what I'm going to get is x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 0. Again, the only way that we're going to get uh, the sum of two squares equaling 0 is if both of those square terms were also 0. So the trace here is a point or points at 0, 0, and plus minus 2. So this is identifying where those two hyperboloid caps are beginning. So I'm going to take a fairly chunky step here on the z-axis, right? Very large tick marks at plus and minus 2, and then indicate that single point there as a trace. Now if we can just get one more appropriate trace above and below positive 2 and negative 2 respectively, and we get one ellipse drawn in both of the caps of the hyperboloid, then that's enough to really sketch it together. So you really need to work hard in picking some appropriate values for z so that you can identify what, uh, how large or how skinny these two pieces of the hyperboloid are. So I'm going to choose what may appear to be a very odd value for z, but I'm going to do it in a way that it's going to make the algebra work out. I'm going to choose z to be plus and minus the square root of 2. All right, so when we plug that in, the square root plus and minus 2 root 2, 
uh, is going to give me 8. So I have 8 over 4 minus y squared over 9 minus x squared over 4 equals 1. So why I did that is because I have a 2 over here. When I move the 1 over, that leaves me with 1. And let me kick those negative terms over. x squared over 4 and y squared over 9. So this is a nice, easy ellipse to sketch. The only thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we um, know how high up 2 root 2 is. So um, let's just go ahead and do I have a calculator on here? Maybe not. All right, we're just going to eyeball it. We'll say that 2 root 2 is right up here and right down here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my ghost axes at 2 root 2. So we have x and y and do the same up above. Now remember, I took fairly large um, tick marks on the z-axis, but I'm gonna do significantly smaller tick marks on the x and y axis. So for x, we wanna go out plus minus two. For y, we wanna go out plus minus three. So go ahead and indicate that, one, two, one, two, and then three. And let's sketch in these ellipses. Once you have that ellipse drawn, you can go ahead and connect the bottom of the bowl with the top of the bowl. So it's a fairly shallow bowl here. And if you want any other mesh lines, you can draw in a few of those. So there's the top portion. Let's do the bottom as well. All right, so there's the base of our bowl, and then let's connect it with the tip of it. And again, if you wanna give it a little bit more dimensionality, you can trace in a couple of lines. And so you can see all of this region in here where there is no graph of this function or this surface. Rather, we just have these two bowls. Again, these are infinite. So had you picked a larger Z value, your bowl might look a little bit larger or more stretched out than mine, and same down below. All right. In either case, it's still going to have the same void here in between um, negative 2 and 2 on the z-axis, and then make sure that you just have the shape or the elliptical shape of your two pieces of your hyperboloids there appropriately. Okay, we've got two more examples, and we're going to kick it up a notch here with number 23. Um, they did not really try to put any crazy weights in here, but this example is for the ever popular hyperbolic paraboloid, also known as the saddle. The saddles are hands down the most difficult to draw. Um, and part of it is because in every plane you look, there's almost a different trace. And so you have to be very careful in how you choose the traces of these saddles. So follow my lead here. We're going to start by finding the traces in x equals 0 and y equals 0. So starting with x equals 0, we get z equals y squared. All right. So in x equals 0, this is in the plane of the paper. All right, so you're truly drawing um, in two dimensions in this particular example. And this is a parabola. So we only want to go so far out. 
let's go out one and one on the y-axis and then up one on the z. So we want to come out to here and out to here and go ahead and sketch that parabola. Now again, we all know that this parabola goes out to infinity. So this is this could extend further. I'm not going to just for drawing purposes, but we understand that this, this um, saddle is going to extend to infinity. So along the same lines here, let's do y equals 0. We get z equals negative x squared. So this is again going to be in the, whoops, the xz plane, which is the plane that's coming out of the paper at us. And this is just an upside down parabola. So we're going to go out 1 and negative 1 on the x-axis, and we want to go down 1 on the z. And so we're coming to here and here. And so I'm going to make this front piece solid, and I'm going to make the back piece dashed. All right, right now it's really hard to see what's happening, but we have two parabolas that are touching at the origin. One is shifting upward and the other is shifting downward. So now what we would like to do is we would like to piece it together with appropriate hyperbolas. So what we're going to do is sticking with this one value, we're going to find the traces at z equals 1 and also at z equals negative 1. So let's start with z equals 1. We have 1 equals y squared minus x squared. Notice that the y squared term is positive in this hyperbola, so that means it's going to touch the y-axis had we projected it down. However, we're up at z equals 1. So let's sketch this appropriately. Here is z equals 1, and we want y to equal 1 right here and x to equal 0. So we're touching the endpoints of this parabola and then moving outward. All right, so you can see that in the plane of z equals 1. Let's do the same thing in z equals negative 1. We get negative 1 equals y squared minus x squared. If we multiply through by negatives, we get 1 equals x squared minus y squared. This is almost identical to the hyperbola that we just graphed, the difference being that it has now been turned 90 degrees. So instead of touching up top at the y equals 1, now we're touching at the x equals 1. So we're touching here and here, in front and in back of this saddle. So in the front, I'll draw a solid hyperbola that's elongated based on the way that we're viewing this saddle. And then we also have one in the back. I'm going to make that one dashed all the way back. And then I'm going to piece this together on the side so that we can really see the sheets of this saddle. So we can bring this down here. We also want to bring down in the back and connect to the dashed line. And then same in front. So bring it down here. Let me extend this back piece and down as well. So you can really see our saddle take shape. Um, and the key here is to plot the two parabolas, which are governing right there in the base of the saddle, or the crotch of the saddle, if you will, and then two hyperbolas in each direction to give you the top and bottom of this saddle. Okay, these are definitely the most difficult, so make sure you practice one of those on your own. And we finish off our notes here with problem 25. Um, in this case, we have a linear z term, and then we have the sum of two squared terms, x squared and y squared. So let's put this into standard form first and then identify. This is z equals x squared over 4 plus y squared over 2. And we recognize this to be an elliptic paraboloid. An elliptic paraboloid. All right. 
Um, so in my opinion, these are probably the second easiest to plot, um, second only to the ellipsoid. Um, in two of the coordinate planes, we get, uh, excuse me, in two of the coordinate planes, we get parabolas. In the third coordinate plane, we get ellipses. Again, I feel very confident in drawing ellipses, so I try to choose um, planes whose traces are ellipses, and those are going to occur in the z equals a constant plane because we see over on this side the sum of two squared terms. So let's pick various values for z and just pick values that are easy for you to uh, uh, evaluate and find those traces. At z equals 0, we get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 2 equals 0. Again, this is just a single point at the origin. There's only one value for x and y that satisfies this equation. So now let's pick some other values here. And probably z equals 1 is going to be our best bet. That gives us x squared over 4 plus y squared over 2 equals 1. So let's take a fairly large jump up at z equals 1. Let's put in our ghost axes here along x and along y. And along x, we're going to come out 1, 2. And along y, we're coming out square root of 2. So that's a little bit more than 1. And let's sketch in. This is a very skinny ellipse here. Now, if you wanted to sketch one more ellipse, for example, at z equals 2, you most certainly can. But really, one ellipse is enough for us to see how wide this paraboloid is. I'm going to go ahead and connect it. And I'll reiterate one more time here that this is an infinite surface extending upwards. So you can extend this as high as you want up to indicate, um, you know, better the shape of this paraboloid. So this concludes our notes over quadric surfaces. Um, please take time to really practice sketching these in your homework and notes um, so that you can gain some confidence in, in your skills in this. And we will continue on with one more section in Chapter 11, which is going to be a little uh, break from what we've been doing. We'll talk about different coordinate systems in three dimensions.